Hi, Lewis Kemper here in Wanderer. I'm getting ready to take the first test run in the van. The weather here in California hasn't been too hot. It's pretty much been raining almost every day since Christmas, it seems like, and this is the middle of March. So uh, I have a window today. It's not going to rain. It's going to start raining again Saturday night or Sunday morning. So I'm off to a campground for a one-night stay just to try out the systems. It took me a while to find somewhere to go, but I'm going to Buckhorn Campground at Black Butte Lake. It's about a two-hour drive here from Sacramento. So hopefully everything will work out. I've got everything that I need. And if not, I've got a paper and pencil, and I'm going to make a list of all the stuff I need to get. So, so we're going to experience my first camping adventure in Wanderer. Well, I just got to the campsite, and I was going to do that really cool thing where I set up the tripod and pull into the campsite. But I realized my campsite was downhill and I was going to have to back up on the blocks and didn't really want to embarrass myself. So I had to come back, you know, come down part way and set my blocks and I actually did really well. I'll show you. So here's the van and you can see I'm up on the blocks there. A little far on that one, but I think it's going to hold, better hold. And really well on that one and I just put a level up on the counter in the van and it's totally level so got to use one of my new toys the leveling blocks and I'm pretty proud of myself for getting up on them and not going over so pretty neat here's my campsite I'm right here by the lake it's a man-made lake and a reservoir not the prettiest but definitely not the ugliest place I've ever camped. Uh, got a nice camp uh, table right here. Looks like the restrooms are right down there. Got some oaks. Uh, it's a teeny bit buggy, not too bad. I sure wish I'd have gotten the bug screens in. I'm not really going to be able to leave uh, the doors open but I will open the windows and put up the screens uh, in a little bit. So pretty nice here. Just thought I'd share. hop up and just because of the bugs I think I'll keep the door closed but I'm going to open up my shades and put the bug screens up in the in these windows anyway for now. It's pretty dark in here right now so I'm just going to open up and come over here and Open up. Um, spin this around for you. Show you my cool windows. There we go. Put up my screens. do that down here. And now I'm going to make the climb and do it back here. It's about 70 degrees outside today right now, so it's a little warm. So it feels good to have the windows open. Get a little cross breeze going in here. 
and I think I'll just go walk around and explore a little bit and test out the uh, stove later tonight and the microwave tomorrow morning and we'll just see how things are going. But the drive up here was nice. It's actually the first time I got to drive the van in um, cruise control because I, you're not supposed to do that until you go drive over a thousand miles and I just recently went over a thousand miles in the van in spite of having it for a year. So I got to use the cruise control system and I was really excited. It worked great. Uh, it's the adaptive cruise control so it slows down and speeds up and keeps me a good distance from everybody else. And Driving up here was a real breeze. And now I'm going to go off and go exploring. Well, it's dinner time. I decided to make an early dinner because it could be a good sunset tonight. So I've got everything I need ready for dinner. So I'm just having refried beans, tortilla, and vegetables today. I'm watching my battery consumption here. <laughs> it's only gone down 1%. So that's pretty cool. Not quite hot enough. Well, I think everything is ready now. Turn off the stove. Find my plate. And dish it up. Make a note of all the things I've forgotten so far, like camp chairs, aluminum foil, uh, garlic powder, and that's just the start of the list. All right, so I'm going to get the table out and go sit down. Well, having my first meal, and everything's delicious. I think I can get used to this. So this is one of the cooler toys that I got off of Amazon. It's a dish rack and it expands. So I can place it over the sink and lay my dishes out to dry. It's got a place for a silverware holder if you had silverware, but I didn't really use that much just a fork so I'm not going to bother putting that out but pretty cool little dish strainer thing that I got off of Amazon. There will be links to this down below in the notes and while you're down there looking at the links please make sure you click the little subscribe button and subscribe to the channel and that way you won't miss out on any of my adventures. A little nifty item I got since storage is such a premium inside an RV or motorhome these are collapsible storage containers so I can store them flat like this. And then when I need to put my leftovers in there, it's like I use this one for some chocolate. This one went to Africa with me, I think. But I'm going to put my leftover refried beans in here. If I can figure out where I put them. There we go. Here's my spoon. And I'll just store my leftover refried beans in here and stick it in the fridge. So I love these little portable containers. They were great for travel. Like I said, I took a couple with me to Africa when I went, and I was able to store uh, things inside my tents in the um, camps without worrying about rodents and things getting into them. So pretty handy little gadget. 
I'm going to head down to the lake and photograph sunset. Grab my camera here and walk on down. Well, this video might get a little bouncy. So I'm on that GoPro tripod and I'm on a floating dock. So any movement I do is going to shake that little tripod. Sorry about that. I just didn't feel like carrying two big tripods down here today. So. I'm here. At, what is this called? Black Butte Lake. And we're going to have a pretty good sunset here. So I'll try not to rock the boat too much. I've got my Tamron 15 to 30 on here, so a nice wide angle. And it's looking really good. I think these clouds are really going to light up tonight. I think I can shorten my self-timer here. Yeah, I've got it on a five-second delay. I'm going to cut it back to a two-second delay. Looking good. It's going to be a pretty sunset tonight. Let's see. You don't see my head, so I'm going to come down and readjust. There we go. So as I mentioned, I'm out at Black Butte Lake at Buckhorn Campground. And we're going to have a wonderful sunset here. these great clouds tonight. So I'm shooting at 15 millimeter to get it all in. Quite nice here. I'm glad I made the trip out because so far the van's working great. That's the big thing. I wanted to test using the stove and I'm going to test the microwave convection oven tomorrow morning when I make my oatmeal and so far everything's going really well so I'm quite quite pleased so far quite pleased and look at this I mean you can't beat it An incredible sunset and this is just a three minute walk from my camp spot so pretty cool So now it's just a matter of waiting and watching and watching the colors change. So I'm just going to let the video run and I'll probably edit parts out so you don't have to wait the whole entire time. But these clouds are so good I want to do a vertical. So I've got my L bracket on. And I'm just going to flip my camera into the vertical position. I can see what I'm doing here. Here we go. That looks great. Very cool clouds. What a wonderful evening. So the weather's supposed to change tomorrow. We're heading back into another rainy period. It's supposed to rain for the next four or five days. So my ladder's supposed to come in on Monday 
and it's supposed to rain I think until Thursday so who knows when I'm going to get the ladder up and I can't work on the internet until I get the ladder up because I have an Insta Connect system and my sim has to go into the antenna which is up on the roof so one delay after another but eventually it'll all come together Might not get as intense as I thought. We'll see. Maybe that'll all turn red. I'll flip back over and do another horizontal now that it's gotten pinker. We're kind of losing the intensity right now, but I'm hoping it picks back up. We get that afterglow, I hope. Oh, the color's fading. I might not get as lucky as I thought. But I'm going to wait because I've been fooled before. I always think back to a sunset that I had. Uh, my friend Adam Jones, a uh, well-known photographer, a Canon Explorer of Light, was visiting. We were photographing a sunset like this down on the American River, and it faded like this. We put all our stuff in our bags and turned to walk away, and then the sky just lit up red. You never saw two photographers move so fast to unpack their gear and get set up again. So I'm going to wait it out and see what happens. It's a real short walk back. I can do it in the dark. So right now for the sunset, I'm just shooting on aperture priority. I have it at 64 ISO, which is the native ISO of my Z9 and the aperture of F10. I do have an exposure compensation of minus 0.7. Uh, darken it a little bit and saturate the color. But the color is eluding me. Need to level this a little bit and I have a leveling base on my tripod so it makes it much easier to get it level. Well, I think we're just going to end up going into darkness. After re-level, since I re-aimed. That means my tripod legs aren't level. Oh, I hear a great horned owl. up towards where my van is. There are a bunch of oak trees up there. Maybe he's nearby.
It's still nice light out here. There's not a lot going on in the clouds. Yeah, I think the owl's coming from that other grove of trees a little bit, a little further away. Well, I think just a couple more minutes and I'm going to head back up. Well, too bad it's going to be cloudy. I'm going to, maybe I'll come back out later tonight. If I can see the Milky Way. Oh, well, I'm going to wrap it up here and head on back to the van. Spend the night in Wanderer. Well, it's dark out now. I've got the van all shut up. Um, it's about, let's see now, about 8.45. I think I'm going to watch one episode of The Mandalorian on my tablet here. And then I think I'm going to go to bed because um, it's starting to clear up a little bit out there. And the Milky Way will be visible after 3 a.m. So I think I'm going to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go see if I can see the Milky Way or not. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Well, good morning. I did get up at 3 a.m. and go out to shoot the Milky Way, but looking southeast to the direction of the Milky Way was a lot of light pollution. Uh, the city of Chico is over that direction. So I took a few shots, um, did a couple stacking sequences, and we'll see what I get. I couldn't see really the Milky Way with my naked eye, so I don't think the pictures are really going to amount to much. So this morning I'm up to my first really big challenge is trying the microwave oven and making oatmeal. I don't know if you've ever made oatmeal in a microwave before, but it's pretty temperamental. So getting the exact right uh, timing to not overflow and make a mess. Every microwave is a little bit different. This is going to be my first experiment. So I got my fingers crossed I don't make too big of a mess, but I'm going to put paper towels down in the microwave just to make sure because when I go to different hotels and different things and try this, it's always different and it's hit or miss whether you get a good one. So once, once you learn the formula and figure out your microwave, it's pretty easy. But it's just getting that first one done correctly. So I'll let you know how it goes. Looking good. So I dropped the power level down to 8, did it for 2 minutes and 50 seconds, and it's just perfect, just the way I like it. So that's great news. Um, happy with the way things are going with the microwave, and didn't use too much power, so we're doing good. So now I'm going to add my blueberries.
my bananas. nice thing about being in the campground is I can just take my banana peel and toss it in the garbage can. If you're boondocking somewhere, I actually have a compost bin for all that kind of stuff. So I can keep it with me until I get to somewhere with trash. Now I have my gourmet breakfast. So I'm using my little AT&T hotspot here. working okay, not real impressed with the download speeds, but it'll be interesting to see. I'm going to take the sim out of this thing and put it up in the Insta antenna and see if it doesn't do any better, but for now I'm trying it out like this. So I'm going to eat breakfast and read the Sacramento Bee, just like at home. Well, I'm going to leave here now. Everything was pretty successful on the trip. I'm feeling good about the van. Uh, I learned a few things today. I couldn't figure out how to get the hot water going, so I actually had to text Andrew at Fox Vans and get some tips. But I figured that out now, and hopefully I'll never ever forget again. Um, I'm going to head to the Sacramento Wildlife Refuge and just see if there's anything happening there on my way home. So if I get there and it's exciting, I'll film a little bit more. It's kind of quiet here. There's a couple shovelers up close that I got some good pictures of. But otherwise, I haven't seen anything too interesting as we're driving along. Let's see if I get lucky. Well, we're just cruising looking for something to photograph. decided it was a good time for lunch and a good place for lunch. So I'm just having some homemade hummus that I brought with me. And it's just going to be a fast, probably a stand-up lunch. Maybe I'll go sit in the chair. Probably I'll go sit in the driver's seat and watch birds while I eat. But not a whole lot to see here at the Wildlife Refuge, so I don't think I'm going to spend a whole lot of time. I'll be heading home soon. So there's something a little unusual. We've got snow on the coastal range in the background here at the Wildlife Refuge. So that's a little bit different.
few good shots today, not too much. Well, I made it back home, and it was a wonderful trip. I learned a lot on this trip. One of my major concerns was what happens when I ran all the electrical systems. How would the batteries do? I have a lot of battery power. I have 700 amp hours of batteries in the van. Should keep me powered for quite a while, and now I'm convinced that it will. I went out, I used the induction stove, I ran the microwave, I had the diesel heater on for six hours overnight, I had lights on for hours, I used the fan, I, uh, what else did I do? Um, I played music over the amplifier, I played an episode of The Mandalorian over the amplifier, I had the refrigerator and freezer running, you know, I had the water pumps running, all those systems going, and I only dropped down to 96%. And then once I started driving or the sun came up, that recharged. So I'm convinced that I can go out for days upon days and not have any trouble keeping power in my van. And that's what I was really concerned about and wanted to learn about. So I'm really excited. The van did great. It was a wonderful trip. The photography was only, you know, so-so, but it was more of a learning experience than anything else. So I enjoyed my first trial run out in Wanderer. I plan to take a lot of really good adventures coming up, and uh, this summer I'm going to drive up to Alaska. I'd like to take you all along on the adventure. So make sure you go down below, click the subscribe button, and that way you won't miss any fun. We'll go out, we'll take lots of great pictures, I'll share photographic tips with you, and it'll be a blast. So follow me along and take care. This is Lewis Kemper in Wanderer, signing off. See you next time on the road.